Thank you all for coming. I'm Philip Summer. I'm the Director of Entrepreneurship Programs here at Darden. Um, this is hopefully the first of what will be many events uh, between partnering uh, between the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Batten Institute, and the Entrepreneurship Programs at Darden. And we're very pleased to have uh, Ed Hess tonight talk about his book. I want to introduce Mike Lennox, uh, who is going to be introducing our speaker tonight. Uh, Mike is the Slover Professor of Business. He's Associate Dean here at Darden. He's also the Executive Director, uh, having newly come to Darden, of the Batten Institute. And we're very pleased to have him. And um, I'll turn the mic over to you. Well, welcome on behalf of uh, Darden and the Batten Institute. Welcome here tonight. We're very excited about the event tonight. Uh, when we think about the Batten Institute and think about our goals, we, we talk about a three-pronged strategy. First, we look to foster and encourage transformative research on the topics of entrepreneurship and innovation. But we don't want to stop there. We talk about having a consequential voice uh, in the world of practical affairs. So taking that research and pushing it out to the world of practice. And then finally, we talk about having an energetic community, an energetic community of scholars, of students, but also the broader community as well. So this event tonight is really, as Philip said, a kind of an attempt, a first attempt perhaps, of trying to build that, that broader network and, and community. Now, when you think about these three goals, I can think of no one better than perhaps Ed Hess to deliver on this idea of transformative research, consequential voice, and an energetic community. Uh, Ed comes to us to Darden after 30 years of experience as a lawyer, an investment banker, a strategic consultant. Uh, more recently, he has been uh, an academic, uh, returning to the academy. Uh, we were fortunate enough to steal him away from Emory, Emory University, where he was the founder and executive director of the Center for Entrepreneurship and Corporate Growth, and also uh, the Values Leadership Initiative there. Uh, Ed has been incredibly productive over the last few years. He has written six books on a variety of different topics, including organic growth and leading with values, and of course on entrepreneurship as well. And so what we're going to hear today is a book by Ed that really reflects on his many years of experience uh, in various capacities influencing uh, entrepreneurial ventures and the like. So please join me in welcoming Ed Hess. And like I said, we're very excited to have Ed with us and excited to hear Thank from him tonight. Thank, Thank you, you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one, I'm, I'm humbled. I'm not sure I'd come out in the cold to hear me talk. And, uh, but thank you for coming. What I want to try and do tonight is, is share with you for a little bit what I've learned in 25 years of, of working with entrepreneurs and also having started three businesses and what my co-author learned in starting eight businesses. And, and what we tried to do when we set out to write uh, this book was to write a book that basically could be taken by anybody that had a high school education. We weren't writing a book for business students. We weren't writing a book, if you will, to be used in a, a business school, although it can. We were trying to write a book which put forth in sort of a workbook fashion, all right, how do you go through the process of deciding to start a business? What are some of the templates or processes that you can go through? What are the steps you should go through? And then what we really wanted to focus on, what was the eight common reasons businesses fail? And this is based on research, based on experience, and based on really informal surveys with people that have been in the business world and financed or started businesses. And so I'm going to spend about 30 minutes talking, and then I'd like to spend 30 minutes Q&A trying to answer your questions. Now, I'm going to, when you ask questions, I'm going to basically give you two types of answers. One answer will be what the research says. But be honest with you, there's a lot of questions which people have about starting a business. We don't have research answers. So then I'm going to give you my best call based on my experience. That's probably worth about as much, you know. Keep in mind, if I was so smart, I wouldn't be so poor, all right? <laughs> but at least it's based on a lot of years' experience as to what I've seen. Okay, a lot of people want to start a business. 
There's over five million businesses that are started each year in the United States. And unfortunately, many, many fail. The research shows and the numbers go anywhere between 40 and 70 percent of the businesses fail. You sit back and you ask people, why does a new business fail? Okay? And the immediate reaction you get from most people, okay, they're undercapitalized. And what we found is that's just a code word. What does undercapitalized mean? You know, you ran out of money, right? Well, you ran out of money for some very specific reasons we found. And we found eight common reasons. And what we try to set forth in the book is how can you have a higher probability of avoiding those eight common mistakes? And understand, okay, there's no guarantee, all right? This is not a foolproof, get rich quick scheme, all right? But it's a probability theory how you can learn from other people's mistakes. Common reasons, my secretary did this. This is the first time I've ever used it where it goes up line by line. I thought it was pretty cute. <laughs> Common reasons for failure. Business ideas are like sand on a beach. Business ideas are plentiful. There are very few business ideas. In fact, I'll go as far to say, I doubt that any of us, including me, Mike, Philip, or any of you experienced entrepreneurs, and there are some in the room, have an idea that no one's thought of, okay? It's not an idea that you gotta really have. You gotta have what I call is a business opportunity. And we're gonna talk about the difference between a business idea and a business opportunity. The most critical mistake that people make in starting a business is they don't understand that it's not about them in their product or their service, okay? Every entrepreneur loves their product, thinks it's the best thing since sliced bread, thinks everybody's gonna love it, thinks everybody will buy it. But the fundamental thing is, is the customer. Will a customer buy it? And when will a customer buy? A customer will buy when you offer them something which solves a need or a problem in a way that's either better, faster, or cheaper than someone else does. You gotta go to the marketplace with a customer value proposition which is different than what somebody is offering now. Pure and simple. And how can it be different? Better, faster, or cheaper? And there's two aspects of a customer value proposition. Customer value proposition to whom and different from whom. And where people don't do their homework. So a gentleman here told me he's thinking about starting a business. Most important thing he needs to do is to figure out what am I going to sell? Who's going to buy it? And why are they going to buy it? And it's the why they're going to buy that I'm focusing on in customer value proposition. And we spend a whole lot of time in the book talking about how you map your product against competitors, how you do competitor analysis, how you design your product, what features and benefits do you have to be different, how do you do market research to find out what customers want. And we'll go a little bit into that. Another reason why a lot of businesses fail, it's what I call the numbers don't pencil. All right? The, nobody sits down and be, thinks about, and I use in the book, a sandwich shop. Okay? You can tell I like sandwiches. A sandwich shop. So you want to open up a deli. And let's say that you want to earn $80,000 a year from your deli. Profit before tax. How many sandwiches do you have to sell to earn $80,000? Now, what do you need to know? Anybody? We can make this interactive just like class. 
how much it costs to make a sandwich. What else do I need to know? What I'm going to sell them for, right? Yeah. So that will give me what? If I know if I can estimate my cost of a sandwich from my price will give me my margin, my profit margin, right? All right, so I'll know, and let's just make believe there's 20% profit margin, okay? Let's make the math easy. $5 sandwiches, how much am I going to make profit? A dollar profit. All right, now, is that all I need to know? Yes, ma'am. How many do I need to sell per day? And there's some other costs that we haven't talked about, right? Besides the cost of the turkey and the lettuce and the tomato and the mayonnaise and the mustard and the saran wrap, right? And who's doing all the work, right? What's the other cost? My overhead, my payroll. Ooh. So that's going to even reduce my margin more, right? Profit per sandwich. Wow. So I'm sitting here and I'm saying, how in the world do I figure all that out before I even have a deli? We talk about in the book how you go find those types of answers, okay? How you go outside the area you live and you go visit sandwich shops owned by entrepreneurs. And, and entrepreneurs generally, so long as you don't go to where you live and you go in a, over to Waynesboro or Stanton, they'll talk to you, okay? They'll, they'll give you information. 